Good evening from Xfinity Center. Maryland takes it over the thundering herd of Marshall, 104 to 67. I'm Wayne Viner, that's Bruce Posner, and our world famous basketball guest, Jimmy Patsos. Bruce, take it away. Bruce, Jimmy, man, him old school, old yeah. school. Jimmy, 104 67. I know it's Marshall. Marshall was 5 and 0. Marshall went to the NCAA last year. Right. They were good. And I tell you what, early on, it looked like it was going to be a game. But the, you happen to see, I don't know if this is your first game live, but you happen to see this team at its best tonight. I believe with a yellow hit from the outside and everybody hitting. And Cowan was maybe his best game. Yeah, Cowan can really score. And I mean, he's going to not just be a point guard, he has to score for him. I saw them this summer. I've been to several practices. Uh, Turgeon and I talk. And I think. He's got the deep team, meaning eight players, and but a lot of interchangeable parts. Ayala can shoot the three. Wiggins is good. Marcel's a kind of a Swiss Army knife, do a little of everything. But Bruno Fernando tonight, he showed me a lot of things. Expo you know, exposing Marshall's size by blocking shots, dunking. And, and then Sticks is just one of those guys at the end of the night, he stats stuff. So I really like Jalen Smith. He's got that body that's going to you know, eventually turn into a lottery pick in a couple of years. I really like this team, and I was really impressed because Marshall's a good team. Let me, I got to ask you a question about Sticks. When you look at the early mock drafts from guys who that's all they do, sure. you see Sticks way up there. Is it too early? It's early in the process, but the NBA likes young kids. What I would love to see him do, stay two years, become the number one or two pick in the draft. What do I know? But if he stays two years, he will. But he's tall, he's athletic, he's a nice kid, he's got a good character, he can shoot free throws, he's got a good game from the free throw line. But there's a lot of work to be done. All right, so the game was pretty tight early. Uh, and and, I, I and Marshall right had... Right. I saw that. Marshall could shoot threes. Right. And then suddenly it looked like Maryland's point guard depth. At one point, the guards had 25 of 40 points between Cowan and... Uh, Ayala. I think, yeah, super guard Eric Ayala from Delaware. Really What's your like take Ayala. on Ayala and what makes him special? He, he really pops He's to me. He's got a lot of grit. He's tough. What Ayala does is, in other words, he can play the point or the two. And that way, Cowan can kind of play the point in the two. Now, you got a little Blake Dixon combination where guys can do two things. Now, the other thing I liked is they were up 10. They hit two threes in a row. Turgeon did it. Turgeon did a great job. Coach Turgeon did a great job. Called timeout immediately. And then we beat them at their own game. We were making the extra pass for open threes, and they were taking bad threes. So, got great coaching adjustment. And the last thing is, when, you, when you're up 15 at halftime, it's tough to tell the team, hey, we don't have... You know, we don't have it in the bag. Instead, they put the they, they put the gas pedal down, right. but and we came out flying in the yeah. second half. I think we outscored them 15 to nothing coming out of the break. Right, and a lot of times that's hard to get teams to do, especially college players, because they think everything's okay. So I thought it was a well-coached game, a great test, and I'm um, coming Wednesday night, and I can't wait to see what they do against Virginia. Yeah. Question for you. Let's say you were Coach of Marshall. I was a little surprised that Dan Tony. Why did he just let the game go nuts and not call a couple timeouts in that second half? You know, he's, he's, he's playing for his league in Conference USA, which is where Middle Tennessee State won, Old Dominion and Jeff Jones, and Robert Eason, who coached here, is at UAB. Very good conference. A little smaller guys than we have, but a very good conference. He's, he's undefeated coming in. He's going to do what he does that gets his team ready for his January, February slate. So, in other words, if that's what he does, lets guys play out of their streaks and not worry about bad shots, he kind of went with it, but I also think the Terps did a good job defensively, but I was very impressed. We outmaneuvered them by making the extra pass for open threes. All right. This is the Viner Four Gates postgame show live from Xfinity Center this Friday night. Maryland blows out Marshall. We'll be back with guest Jimmy Patso, see what he's doing now, and we'll talk Maryland, Penn State after this break. As we all know, time is money. That's where our fully managed approach to IT can help. With proactive remote monitoring and management, we're able to keep tabs on your IT infrastructure 24-7, 365 days a year. Want to learn more? Drop us a line today to see exactly how we can help keep your systems running smoothly and keep you focused on what matters most, growing your business. Terps roll this Friday night. Special guest Jimmy Patsos. Bruce, take it away. So let's hear what Jimmy Patsos, uh, longtime Maryland legend, 
Everybody loves him, but, but let's hear. Give me an update on Jimmy Patsos. Uh, things are really good. I'm uh, working for the Washington Wizards. I work for NBC Sports, and I do the pregame and postgame with Tony Massenburg, Christy Winters. And I really enjoy that, but my real passion is working for Under Armour Basketball. Kevin Plank, Walker Jones, Ryan Keel. We've known each other a long time. They had a little void. I'm doing a lot of badminton. Auburn, UCLA, South Carolina, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, these practices, going to a lot of college. I saw Ricky Lindo this summer. He was playing on the Under Armour circuit. And by the way, I think it's a great pickup. The Terps got him late. He could have gone to prep school. So a little grassroots, which is Under Armour, you know, AAU type stuff, to college. And advising a little on the pros. I'm learning the pro game. I don't know that much about the pro game right now in terms of how guys sell shoes because we have, of course, Steph Curry, but we also have... Joel Embiid we just signed, yes. and we've got some young guys, but Joel Embiid's going to be a real force for us in Philadelphia. So I'm learning that. I really, you know, Kevin Plank and what Under Armour's done for this school in this area is tremendous, but we're new in basketball, and you can ask the kids. The shoes are tremendous these days. Our gear's great, but we're becoming a force in basketball, and adding Joel Embiid and schools and having Auburn and UCLA and Maryland do well and Wisconsin, and I'm just trying to help them accelerate that process to where we can get to the next level. Hey, hey Jimmy, what the hell's wrong with the Wizards? Well, it's, it's almost unbelievable, you know, and they're in this thing now. season. But, but they're talking about, well, we're ready to trade Wall and Beal. Why? Well, who's ready? I mean, the, they said. Uh, I mean, the that's the rumor, right. But who the hell's well, they responded by beating the Clippers, so maybe right. that got the place. Look, they had a tough game. They had a tough swing on the road. They had like eight out of their first ten games on the road because their, uh, you know, Capital One Arena was taken by, by another event. Wall's an interesting guy. I'm learning more about the pros. Bradley Beal's a real talent, and I clearly think that when they have Dwight Howard, they have a chance in the East. They're, you know, their division is different, and the conference is different. But with Butler coming over from Philadelphia, it's going to be a dogfight. I, I, you're looking for improvement in the Wizards. It's not college. You know, it's an 82-game season. I'm right. learning it. Right. But they did beat the Clippers, and I'm doing in the right. game on uh, Monday night, so right. I'm excited so to go do that. I'm playing the right. Rockets. I'll see okay. what You've coached a lot, a lot of different levels. How do you get these guys to get along? Because that seems to be the overriding issue here. You know, I'm not in the locker room every day, but I'll tell you one thing about the Maryland Terrapins. This is a tight team that get along. I love the chemistry Turgeon has going nice on here. Nice segue back to segue Maryland. Off the yeah. 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 All right. No, yeah. but I'm being serious. I really see something with this team, and that's yeah. that's why I got to go to practice, and that's yeah. why I have to have a body of work. In the NBA, remember, the body yeah. of work is really long. Yeah. Turgeon uh, loves this team. He loves it. And as he should, and, and Turgeon's an emotional field guy. You know, yeah. you know, Mark Turgeon wasn't an all-star player. He's a yeah. grinding guy that got a lot of things, got, a, got the most out of his talent at camp. Kansas, mm -hmm. and he was always a great teammate, great competitive, great camaraderie guy. Yeah. He sees that in this team, and I like that. All right, well, we look forward to having you back on sure. talking basketball after the Virginia this game. Doing great after the Virginia okay, game. Okay, but you said a couple other games. All right, you said you watched the Maryland Ohio State game as a basketball guy. Great game, not one great game. One of the best football games I've seen in a long time. I watched from start to finish. Yeah, Greg Manning, my old assistant, yeah. <laughs> carrying the family tradition from his father to here. Yeah. You know, I can That's feel Greg the energy Manning's around. Son? That's Greg Manning's son. Oh, That's Greg cool. Manning Jr. Well, we should. You, you should have him on. Yeah. Time. I thought the Ohio State game just showed that the Maryland football team in Canada has done a really good job. Yeah. Clearly, we wanted to be bowl eligible. I know we go to Penn State, and that's tough. Yeah. But for what they've gone through, they've really, you know, come together. But that Ohio State game was was an incredible football game. And to have a chance to win that shows that Maryland football can, you know, get to where it needs to get to. Yep. But I'm really excited about the basketball team here. I'm worried, I, I, I think the Big Ten, we got a chance to win the Big Ten. I did see Michigan State play last night. And I'm just excited for Virginia. And I'm also excited for the Loyola Chicago game. It's, it's, it's Saturday in Baltimore at the Baltimore Arena, December 8th. What does Maryland have to do to beat Virginia? Because Virginia seems to Score take, more it, points they they take you out of the game. No, I'm being serious. In other words, you have to... They want to play slow. We want to play fast. And I talked about the Will Chicago and the Seton Hall games. But Virginia is the biggest game of our year before the Big Ten. And one thing I think about Virginia is if you can get a lead on them, and that's what UMBC did in that game, you can turn them around. When they play at their deliberate pace, it's 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 slow. It was, it was a 50-point game today against yeah. Wisconsin. I'd rather see it. And I'm a Gary Williams guy. I want fast, running, pressing. Well, and it might I be time to press. That's You've a good point. A yeah, but you can maybe you could speed up Virginia on purpose. It's probably worth taking that opportunity. Well, I know we need as many fans as possible out here on Wednesday because it's going to be a great opportunity. And when we upset and beat number four, then we'll be in the top 25. Absolutely. I think if this game, we might sneak in there this week. I think we, we could. 
Right. Yeah, deservedly so. Like it's not where you are now. You know that. It's the end so, of the year. Uh, but it's good for the fans, and I'm telling you, as, the, as a fan and a family member of, you should come out and watch this team play. It's a great environment. All right. You know what? We'll talk about Maryland Penn State on the radio tomorrow. Oh, fair Let's enough. go catch this press conference. Bruce, see you guys. Hey, I'll Jimmy, see thanks you. for coming Thanks. on Wednesday night. Thanks. Yep, I'll we see got you. your book. See you at Bentley's. All right. All right. <laughs> see you. Uh, for Bruce, this is Wayne. Good evening. From Xfinity Center, we will see you on the radio tomorrow morning and live from Happy Valley. Good evening.